Amen, amen. Good morning. Welcome to our 11 a.m. service. We greet you with joy in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the way of church news, please be mindful of all our studies going on through, through, through the week coming up. We do want to emphasize our women's Bible study this coming Thursday evening. And the way updates going forward, our church conference is October 26th. Our quarterly conference is November the 4th. And our district conference starts on November the 10th. Amen. Let us unite our hearts for a word of prayer. Most gracious, eternal God, our Father. Father God, we come this morning with thankful hearts and grateful souls. Lord God, we are just so amazed at how you treat each one of us as your children. Father God, we know that we don't always do what you've asked us to do. We don't always show the direction we should go. But Lord God, we're going to ask that you forgive us, that you create in us a clean heart. And that through your spirit, we would be empowered to move forward in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, this week we have seen some good, we have seen some bad, and we have seen some ugly. But we are just so thankful for Jesus because through him we are able, we are able to move and live and have our being. So Father God, right now we give you thanks, we give you praise, and we give you honor. Father God, we're going to ask right now that you meet each one of us out of need. Give us encouragement. Take away any discouragement. Take away any pain and give us healing, Lord God. We ask right now, Lord God, that through the words of your anointed servant, that you would speak a word into our hearts that would bring joy, peace, and comfort. We thank you right now, Lord God, for the love that you have shed abroad for us on Calvary. We thank you, Lord God, that one day we know that Jesus will return because we can stand on your promises. And until then, Lord God, we give your name all great, all praise, all honor, and all glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come, Rodney. Bless us in song. stayed there for a couple minutes and then all of a sudden I'm coming back up the hill again and there was the sun and I related it to myself of, of the peaks and valleys that I've gone through in my life and I just want to say Lord I thank you and I praise you because you covered me and Lord I kept me me and my family Lord Father God and I just thank you and I love you and I just owe you so much and the song, worship song simply says, I love you, I love you, Lord, today. And I love you because you first loved me, Lord, Father God. And it's, it's, it's not by happenstance, but it's just because of you. It says, I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today.
Song simply says, he's been good. I'll go with him till the end. He's my best friend. Have you taken the time to count your many blessings? He's been good. Yeah. I love him, I love him, I love him, I love him. 
my life, my joy, my all. There's nothing in between. He's been good. Yes, he's been good. I'll go with him. church we have now been in about 19 months of COVID I remember the day I left school on March 13th 2020 but as children of God we can't look at the problem we have to look at the possibilities and if you look back over these 19 months you will realize God has not missed a beat he has been faithful he has been good to us amen so let's continue with our tithes and offerings because God has been good. Amen. Our scripture lesson for our sermon this morning comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 through 9. Again, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 through 9. And the word of God reads, Therefore, since through God's mercy we have this ministry we do not lose heart. Rather, we have renounced secret and shameful ways. We do not use deception, nor do we distort the word of God. On the contrary, by setting forth the truth plainly, we commend ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers. Let me read that again. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your servants. For Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. 
but we have this treasure in jars of clays to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. The word of God for the people of God. Finally, come bless us in song. Amen. says we give you the highest praise for you are worthy to be lifted up we give you the highest praise for you are worthy to be lifted up we give you the highest praise for you are worthy Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord's name be praised. We just thank God for being here today, this morning, that we can continue to lift up God's name. We give praise to God for our ministerial staff, Reverend Thomas, for our music ministry, Brother Rodney and our musicians, hallelujah, to our media ministry. Brother Chris, and for those that are just working in the vineyard, 
Hallelujah. Brother Ski back there. Hallelujah. We give God praise. We give God the glory and the honor for what God is doing in our lives. I love the Lord because you care for me. So God, I lift you up and I magnify your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, God, you're worthy. Our scripture has already been read in your hearing. Second Corinthians, the fourth chapter. And I'm just going to lift up verses eight, nine, and 13. Hallelujah, and I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. Hallelujah. We are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. Verse 13. But we continue to preach because we have the same kind of faith the psalmist had when he said, I believed in God, so I spoke. So we can just meditate and ponder on the thought this morning because I know that we're all going through. Hallelujah, don't give up now. Hallelujah, don't give up now. Let us pray. Wise and eternal God, we come today just to say thank you. We thank you, O oh God, for this morning's rising, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, for shining your blessings upon us, O oh God. We thank you for just being Lord of our lives and King of kings. So as we enter into your presence, O oh God, with thanksgiving, into your courts with praise, we give you glory and the honor. Oh God, take control of my mouth, my thoughts, my actions, my moves, oh God. That everything that I do, the very breath that I take, bring praise, glory, and honor to you. God, we thank you for the testimony today that we've gone over the hills and over the mountains, down in the valleys, but God, you never left us or forsaken us. So God, we thank you for this day Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us for the trespasses that we committed against those. But God, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, oh God. Have your way in this service. Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight for you are my rock and my redeemer. We trust you, oh God. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. And let the redeem of the Lord say so. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We are pressed on every side but not troubled. We are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. We get up, but we continue to preach because we have the same kind of faith the psalmist had when he said, I believed in God, so I spoke. Don't give up now. Most of us have a daily routine. We wake up, we get dressed, we eat our breakfast, we do our morning meditation. Some of us get to work and then we do our morning meditation. Most of us do a meditation to invite God into our daily existence. Why? Because we realize that he is the giver of life that he redeems our sins every day, that he supplies daily the things that we need. He is our shelter and our shield and our buckler. He gives us power over the tongue and, and helps us to speak words of life and healing. 
He helps us not to yield to temptation, but find strength and security under the shadow of the Almighty God. We meditate to face a new day with blessings as well as challenges, oppositions, ups, up, uh, setups, and setbacks. Hallelujah. But we are reminded that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the, the powers of, of the old present darkness, against the spiritual forces to, of evil in the heavenly places. Daniel faced tremendous political pressure from the members of the king's court. He was brought to Babylon as a, at a young age, Daniel earned the re reputation of a man filled with light and understanding and excellent wisdom. But unfortunately, day and Daniel lived and worked among jealous people who wanted to see him fail, though he did nothing to deserve their ill will. Have you ever been there? He wasn't looking for a battle, but the battle came looking for him. Don't give up now. In our text today, Paul is encouraging those in Corinth and those brothers and sisters in Greece not to give up in their pursuit and following Christ in spite of hardships that they have encountered. And even though they are weighed down with troubles themselves, Paul encouraged them to continue to encourage those uh, that are around. That's a tall order to encourage somebody when you're down in the valley. But Paul tells them that he too had experienced what they are experiencing now, crushed, and being overwhelmed beyond his ability to cope with the pressures, the fears, the worries, the disappointments, and the cares of this life. But he also came to realize that in his own strength that he could not handle these cares, but when he placed his confidence in Jesus to Christ, everything, not something, but everything worked out right. Proverbs 3, 5, and 8 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding and all your ways submit to him and he will make your pathway straight. It says, do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord, shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Hallelujah. That you when you allow the Lord to lead and to guide your life, it will give you health. It will give you nourishment. It will give you strength for the troubles of this world. Psalms 27 and 8 says, some trust in chariots, some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. They are brought to their knees and fall, but we rise up and stand firm. In other words, they were talking about when the Egyptians were following them in the Red Sea. The Egyptians fell, but we stand on the word of God. You got to realize no weapon formed against you shall prosper. But if you stand on the word of God, you'll rise up and stand firm. Paul said, even though we are pressed on every side by troubles, we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed because we get up when we fall down. Paul says, even though we may go through troubles in this life, we still have the same kind of faith that the psalmist had when he said, I believe in God, so I spoke. In other words, the psalmist and Paul could say, I believe in God, so I spoke, because in the time of trouble, 
When they made their requests unto God, he heard their prayers. He heard every groan, and God delivered them. We ought to give God some praise this morning right where you are because we too, like Paul, can say, I believe in God so I can speak. Hallelujah. We can speak because of the things that God has done in each one of our lives. He's protected us. He's healed our bodies. He's sheltered us from the stormy blast. We know that if it had not been, not for my mama, not for my father, but for my God, where would I be today? That is why we put our confidence and God, because we know that God is able to be, do beyond more than we can imagine. I love that scripture. I love that scripture that he can do beyond more than I can imagine or think of. Oh, I don't even have to think about it because I know my God has everything already in control. But things begin to change in our lives when we place our confidence in Christ Jesus. On one occasion when Paul and Silas had been beaten, cast into prison, around midnight Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the other prisoners were listening. Suddenly there was a massive earthquake and the prison was shaken to his foundation, and the doors immediately flew open, and the chains of every prisoner fell off. So when you are around the anointing, the anointing will not only affect you, but it'll affect those that are around you. All oh, everybody was blessed. Every chain, every shackle fell off. Things begin to change when we put our trust in God. Things in our lives begin to change. I remember when I was assigned my first church. And after being there for one month, the church was condemned. And I remember telling God, these are your people. I don't know what you're going to do. And I remember they were saying, don't start the building process, but we will help you. And I just began to pray unto God. And when God spoke to my spirit and God said, now is the time to begin to build. I didn't wait for nobody to say it was okay. I just stepped out in confidence that God will make a way out of no way. So money began to flow from everywhere and workers began to come in and work pro bono, no fee, no nothing. And all of a sudden when we got to the last thing that we had to put in the church was some chairs. We didn't have any money and I went to borrow from one person to the next person. They said no and finally somebody said we'll give you the money to purchase the chairs but we had to pay it back. And I remember when we got to chairs and we made the first payment and we sent it off, we got a check within a few weeks and it said, bill paid in full. You don't have to worry about paying anything back because Jesus paid it all. I remember the confidence that when God begins a good work, he will have it and he will finish it to the end. You got to have confidence in God. Hallelujah. Confidence in God. When you look at life, when you got confidence in God, you look at life different. You look at life different when we place our confidence in Christ Jesus. I was reading an article the other day and it said, one way that will help us to put our confidence in Jesus and look at life differently is by identifying our confident killers. You gotta identify those confident killers that try to steal our confidence. What are they? Putting our trust in material things. Those things will pass away. 
putting our trust in people because those people, those same very same people that we put our confidence will one day turn their backs on us. We got to realize that that confident killer is that fear, that fear of stepping out and letting God take control of your life. You're not that confident killer, that doubt that tells you that you cannot make it on your own. You got to identify our confident killers. First Timothy 6 and 17 says, teach those who are rich in this world not to be proud and not to trust their money, which is so unreliable. When the economy keeps growing up, we can't afford to pay and pay all our bills. We retire thinking that we're going to live on easy street. But as the economy goes up, we find ourselves what? Struggling. Don't rely on this world's materials, but trust in God that he will provide. Their truth should be in God who richly gives us all we need for our enjoyments. Providence 29 and 25 says, fearing people is a dangerous trap, but trust in the Lord means safety. Uh, fearing people is a dangerous trap because you know what? You submit to those that you fear. And those that you, sub uh, you submit to that you fear are dangerous because they don't stand on their promises. They'll turn and trample on you. They'll turn and mislead you. you got to understand that your confidence is in Christ. Proverbs 25 and 19 says, putting confidence in one unreliable people in the times of trouble is like chewing with a broken tooth, a walking on a lame foot. In other words, it can't support you. In other words, it's going to have you leaning. You got to identify your confident killers and ask God to remove them when you look at, when then you're able to look at life differently. Three, we are free in the spirit when we place our confidence in Jesus the Christ. Joseph faced a battle among his own family. Listen to what I'm saying. So he was promising a dream that he would one day be a ruler. The dream was crushed when his brother sold him into slavery. Despite being an honorable man, Joseph was mistreated and falsely imprisoned. His battle was a battle of betrayal and family strife. It's still going on today. Like Daniel and Joseph, Joseph's battle was won because he trusted and had confidence that God will fill his promise. And that's why 2 Corinthians 2, 17 says, for the Lord is, for the Lord is the Spirit. And wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Even though you might be physically bound or you may lack thereof, you are free in the Spirit because you know that when you stand on God's promises, you shall prevail. Meaning you're free from worry, you're free from stress, you're free from peer, peer pressure, you're free when you place our confidence in Jesus Christ. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who know, who are called according to his purpose. I'm so glad that we're rooted and grounded in my God, that we can be and say that all things work together for good, that we can don't give up, but we can stand in the terms of trouble. The root word of confidence means trust. When we trust in someone or something, we put our minds in it and we know that we can do all things through Christ that 
put your mind on Christ. Have your confidence in him, knowing that you can do anything but fail. Remember this, when we have confidence and trust in God, our heart says, I can cast all my cares on him, for he cares for me. When I have confidence in, in Christ, my spirit says I can speak those things as if they were. Oh, you got to have confidence. You got to have confidence. You got to have confidence in Jesus or Christ. Don't give up. Don't give up now. Don't give up now. Our president is doing a good job. People have confidence that he's going to come up and have a cure and stop this coronavirus from spreading. People have confidence in him with this $6 trillion budget that it would help the economy growth. It would help the middle class family. It would start new environmental programs and more. They have confidence in this man. But one thing they fail to realize as we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the authorities, against powers over this present darkness, against spiritual forces of evil in this heavenly place. But I've come to tell you, I serve a God that can rule over the darkness. I serve a God that can do anything but fail. We serve a God that can raise us up when we look like we're dead. We serve a God that's able to provide all that we need. We serve a God that's able to sustain us. A God that's able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the throne of grace. We serve a God that when we're in the valley, he's also there with us. We serve a God that when we're on the mountaintop, he's there always so don't give up now but continue to have confidence have confidence have confidence in the one who made you the one who raised you the one who made you the one who made you the one who sustained you the one who provided our God our God our God our trust in Jesus the Christ don't give up now, but hold on. Help is right around the corner. Don't give up now. He'll be with you till the end. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're all still going through. And some of us are going through because this COVID virus. Still mourning, our bodies are still going through a healing process. Some of us are still going because we're trying to get adjusted to a new way of living. Some of us are still going because we're leaning to our own understanding because we can't understand what's going on in this world. But I've come to tell you, hallelujah, Jesus is all that you need. Don't give up now. Even though it might look bleak, hallelujah. In a moment, in the twinkling of our eye, he can change our situations around. Somebody needed to know that. But your confidence is not in your family. It's not in your job. Not in your money. But it's all in Jesus the Christ. 
Hallelujah. There may be somebody today that is out of the ark of safety. Somebody that says, I yield, I yield. What must I do to be saved? And all I have to offer you, his name is Jesus. He'll make a way for you. He'll make your crooked roads straight. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. If you are the one, I just want you to raise your hands wherever you are. And I want you to repeat after me. Lord, I surrender all. I take you as my Lord and my Savior. Forgive me for the wrongs that I've committed by thought, word, and deed. Lord, I believe that you were born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, and the third they buried you in a borrowed tomb, and on the third day you rose again. I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Take complete control of my life. If you repeated those words, you are saved. And he welcomes you into the body of Christ. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. There might be those that are struggling. But don't give up now. Let us pray. Eternal Father, our God, we come in the precious name of Jesus. Thank you, O oh God, for you are the light of the world. You are the lily of the valley and our bright and our morning star. God, we cast every confident killer at your feet. We come in the name of Jesus. Thanking you for a new day. We trust you, oh God, with all our hearts, our minds, and our souls. God, we thank you that even when things don't go right, we continue to trust you. And we thank you, oh God, that the sun will shine in each one of our lives through you. And that we see you, oh God, working things out for our good but for your glory. So today we stand on your word and your promise. And we ask you, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. So spirit of the living God, fall afresh upon your people today. Rejuvenate, restore, and deliver. We claim these blessings in your name. For it's Jesus' name that we pray. Let the people of God say amen. Amen and amen. We are so happy and so delighted that you have taken the time out of your morning to come and to worship with us here at Mount Pisgah AME Church, where God gets the glory out of everything that we do and everything that we say. That we reach in to give God the glory we reach out that his light might shine through us. Hallelujah. So as we stand for the benediction. Hallelujah. Now may the grace of our Lord and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide within each one of us now and forevermore. And let all God's people say, Amen. Amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah.